Houston, we have a problem. Captain, are you seeing this? Oh my God. Hello, I'm Patricia Skelton, and I'm one of the astronomers here at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. I am a huge fan of Star Trek, so in 2009, I was, of course, front row to watch the Star Trek movie directed by J.J. Abrams. There was a moment that made the scientists within me very, very happy. In the midst of this battle, we're seeing torpedoes flying across space, striking into the hull of the USS Calvin. It's loud, it's bright, there are explosions everywhere. A crew member is stranded on the interior of that ship, but because we have a pierced hull, all of that air is being sucked out into space, and that unfortunate crew member is taken out into space. And we move from this noisy interior of the USS Calvin out into space, into eerie silence. And that's because sound requires a medium to travel through, and space is an almost perfect vacuum, which means that in space, no one can hear you scream because there is no medium for those sound waves to travel through. That brief moment of silence creates a feeling of eeriness, especially witnessing a space battle, but not hearing anything. So if you ever find yourself in space during the midst of a space battle, unfortunately, you're not going to hear anything. Apollo 13 is one of my favorite movies, and it tells the story about NASA's Apollo 13 mission, that ill-fated mission that launched back in 1970. The movie was directed by Ron Howard and released in 1995. And at the time, there was a really big challenge for him. How can you depict a weightless environment here? CGI was in its infancy, and wire work had limitations to what you could achieve. Panel five. The solution came in the form of a conversation with another director, and that director was Whoa. Steven Spielberg. Spielberg, in a moment of inspiration, said to Howard, I know that NASA used a spacecraft to train their astronauts in a weightless environment. Maybe you should have a chat with him. And that's exactly what Ron Howard did. Howard reached out to NASA to inquire about using their KC-135, also known as the Vomit Comet. As the name suggests, you don't emerge from that aircraft feeling all that well after undergoing flights on it. And that's because the aircraft executes a series of parabolic flights, meaning that it goes up and down in a wave-like motion and is able to recreate intervals of weightlessness. NASA said no, but real Apollo 13 astronaut Jim Lovell spoke to NASA and said, why don't you give Howard a chance? And NASA eventually relented and they loaned the KC-135 to Howard for six months. So Ron Howard built the interior of the capsule that you see the astronauts in in the movie. Okay, now Jack, before the batteries completely die on us in here, let's, uh, let's power down everything. So every time you see a full body shot of one of the cast members floating around in that capsule, those were recorded on the Vomit Comet. And it's that level of attention to detail that always puts a smile on my face every time I watch Apollo 13. And that whole day, it was the last time they appeared in any of our scopes. We often see this in a lot of science fiction, communication that appears to be occurring faster than the speed of light. What is thy bidding, my master? In this particular scene, Darth Vader is having a meeting with the Emperor. Except the Emperor is in the form of a hologram, which implies that the Emperor is nowhere near Darth Vader. In fact, I think we can assume that the Emperor is far, far away. During that chat, 
There are zero communication delays, which itself implies that they are somehow violating the laws of physics. To understand why, we have to look at how we communicate with spacecraft here inside our own solar system. And there's one great example, which is Voyager 1, which is the most distant man-made object in the universe. When we communicate with spacecraft, we send those communications out as radio waves. Radio waves are a form of electromagnetic radiation, which means it's a form of light. And light travels at a very set speed, 300,000 kilometers per second. That's because there is a cosmic speed limit in our universe. Light cannot travel faster than that. Voyager 1 is 24 billion kilometers away from the Earth. So if we send a signal out to today, that message takes just over 22 and a half hours to travel that distance out to Voyager 1. And if you've asked Voyager 1 to execute a task, that means you're going to have to wait 22 and a half hours for a message to come back. So real-time communication, I'm afraid, at least in this universe, is impossible. The Force is strong with him.